Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the second of our groups this evening, the Toy Group. And again, it is my pleasant duty to introduce our group judge, a gentleman with a lifetime experience in toy breeds with great success both in breeding Well, good and evening showing. once again. He's now time for the Toy Group champion, to be judged. And we're going to see an awful lot of dogs of different shapes and outlines here, Frank. But one thing they will have in no common is that they will be small. <laughs> And uh, the, the judge for the toy group will be very familiar in this big ring at Crufts, Bert Easton, famous for his Yaki Pekingese. He's been best in show at Crufts with the Pekingese and twice reserved best in show with other dogs. A great breeder known all over the world for his Pekingese. But a, a huge toy dog lover. And there's Bert down from Scotland. I'm sure he's going to savour this occasion. Warmly welcomed by the crowd here, who all thoroughly enjoyed watching the utility group being judged. So now the turn of the dogs who are small companion or lap dogs. Some bred specifically for that purpose, Frank, and some simply there because of their size. Yes. And here they come now. The first one in the German breed, the Affenpinscher. Followed by the Australian Silky Terrier best breed. Lovely silky straight hair of the Australian Silky Terrier. And the Bichon Frise. And the white Bichon Frise, one of the Mediterranean white breeds. Followed by the Bolognese best breed winner. And another <laughs> Bolognese, similar but a different coat pattern. And now we have our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Ah, from a big entry today, two judges. Here is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. The long coat Chihuahua best of breed winner. Oh, that's very nice, the long coat Chihuahua. <laughs> this is a favourite of mine, and this is an import from Japan. And smooth coat Chihuahua. And uh, look, this uh, party coloured smooth now, coat well Chihuahua. The Chinese crested. The Chinese crested. An extraordinary looking dog, isn't it? Very special. Today. Caught under Tulia coming in now. Distinctive top line. Toy Terrier is next into the, ring. the English Toy Terrier. Ex Only 48 at Crufts this year. Extended Follow trotting action. And here's the, the Griffon. Griffon Bruxellois. Sturdy, chunky little dog. Now we have our Havanese best of breed winner. The Havanese growing in popularity in this country. And the Italian Greyhound. And here's the elegance of the Italian Greyhound. Dainty and exquisite, isn't it? Now please welcome our Japanese chin, best of breed. Oh, wonderful. Strutting his stuff here. Beautiful, beautiful Follow Japanese the King chin. Spaniel. And here's the other of the Royal Spaniels, the King Charles Spaniel. Now we have the Lurchen, or Little Lion Dog. German breed, the Lurchen. Distinctive and the way it's clipped, of course. Breed winner. The white Maltese with the black pigmentation Followed making it stand pincher. out. The Min Pin, the smallest of the Pincher family. Now please welcome our Papillon best of breed. The little butterfly dog, spread wings of a butterfly in the shape of his ears. And our Pomeranian. Little buoyant and Pomeranian there. Breed winner. Now a slow, dignified gait for the Pekingese. It might seem like a long ring for this. Uh, Little rolling gate of the peak. And the breed, the breed was a best in pug. show in 2003, wasn't it? Here comes the pug. And strutting his stuff full of self importance, the breed. Representing the imported registered breeds is this Russian toy terrier. Ah, from the import register, the Rusky toy. A relatively modern breed. We have the Yorkshire but terrier. that's a very smart one. And here. The beautiful steel That's blue coat and the tan the of the Yorkshire Terrier. 
So Frank, what is our judge Bert Easton going to be looking for amongst the toy Well, route? he is very familiar with all of the toy breeds and he's bred not just only Pekingese, but some other toy breeds as well. So he's got a real expert eye and a specialist eye on the toy breeds. So he'll be looking, for, measuring each dog against its breed standard, which is what all judges do in, whether they're judging a class of dogs or judging a variety in a group like this the one closest to perfection. And one thing they seem to have in common is a, a friendly personality. To a, to a breed, they seem to adore attention. And, and of course, they, they were house dogs. You know, one of the things about the toy group, the breeds which comprise the group have been bred for centuries as household companions and historically for the lady of the house. Many of the breeds are miniaturizations of the sporting breeds when the smallest or the runts of the litter were given to the lady to look after. And that's how they were developed. And they bred for the smaller size. Hence, we have a miniaturization of many sporting breeds in front of us now. And due to their size, they're dogs which don't need as much exercise as those larger breeds. But many of them could, could surprise you and how hardy they are. In the early days, often the, the toy breeds were carried around the house in little baskets by their ladies, you know? So it, they were real pampered dogs, yeah? Ooh, but some of them are um, amazingly hardy and quite sporting. Some of them have still got the terrier temperament in them, for instance. And we will see the Yorkshire Terrier displayed, it's traditionally displayed atop a red box. Yes, now we haven't got the box in the ring at the moment, you know? Arena. Perhaps they've... Uh, 2022. Maybe it'll make a later appearance. <laughs> so... Well, here's two which do need a lot of grooming. That would be a daily task, mm. wouldn't it, Frank? In, in the Pekingese, yes. But they shouldn't be overcoated. It should just frame the body. Look at the lovely steel blue there. No red box, but the red ribbon. So is our group judge, Bert Eason, returns to the centre of the ring. Now... The judge coming forward. The judge the coming forward now to look at the Affen Pincher. This is, the is where he examines the dogs in, at close quarters. This the Affen Pincher is a little black devil dog of Germany, developed as a dog to keep down vermin. It's got the Pincher in its ancestry, and with a later infusion of Griffin, which it resembles. It's got a mischievous monkey expression. In German, Affen Pincher means monkey dog or ape terrier. Well, this is three-year-old James, who is best Presumably of breed at Crufts in 2020. So back to defend that title successfully from the Wirral. And the judge looking the to check that that tail is curved gently over the back according to the breed Elf standard. And Germany. the coat would be expected to be rough and harsh yes, to the touch. They, they have to, they have to look the rustic. They should not look over trimmed. Trim. To be a rustic little vermin One dog, zero, yes. Four, and they have this five. strutting action known as a floating goose step. It's a and straight a action a with a little table. lift to it. You yes. Can you see those <laughs> front <laughs> forelegs being lift flicked out? Very distinctive. And from an entry of 10, Nick's choice for best of breed is this well, The Australian Silky Terrier has this classic silky straight hair. And this it's developed by crossing the Australian crossing Terrier the Australian with the Yorkshire Terrier. terrier. The Yorkshire and this one, Revy, is a Finnish champion. When the early breeder, MacArthur Little, based his famous kennel... And our judge Sydney, just taking the brush the there and brushing the coat the to check it for silky. colour. The colour is very important as was it in its ancestry, the Yorkshire Terrier. Steel blue and a soft, silky texture and rich tan. Now, this is a, this is a breed which was bred down from terriers, it was, and it could still do the job of keeping down vermin. The Australian Terrier, keen vermin dogs on the farms in Australia, and the little Yorkshire Terrier, the blue and silk coat. And its early name was the Sydney Silky, wasn't it? Because of the early breeders at kennels in Sydney. And often, you know, many breeds start locally and then their fame spreads and that's how they become international dogs, as these are. Only 10 of them at Crufts this year, but Revy, the best of breed of those 10. And the coat parted all the way from the nape of the neck to the root of the tail. And he's got the sharp pricked ears of the Australian Terrier and the coat of the Yorkshire Terrier. 
as there's the McLeod judge the Bichons today. And the striking outline of the Bichon Frise from the Bichon family, the white Mediterranean breeds. The word Bichon means white dog, and Frise suggests loose curls of hair, and they're two of the breed features. We see the judge there just looking at the pigmentation on the dog's pads. That's very important. Bichon Frise has been a favorite of royalty since the beginning of the 14th century. Well, it was a Bichon Frise that won best of breed, uh, sorry, best in show in 2019. Uh, the white dog is Bichon and Frise, those soft, sort of corkscrew-like curls, aren't they, Frank? And what is, might seem surprising is that this coat doesn't shed. And it's, uh, it should be trimmed to, to shape its head, this sort of round shape around the head. Dark pads, as we see, going away. We can see those pigments as it drives away. It probably came from Tenerife in the 14th century and was taken to mainland Europe by the Phoenicians, the sea traders, developed in the USA and then coming back to Europe. Hugely popular, and this is really going smartly. That dark pigmentation, the halos of dark pigment around the eyes, black nose and black pads. And looking at it from behind, you'd be able to see those hind pads. Yes, kicking, kicking back, yes. This is blue moving eight. across the floor. Be best of breed and come through to the group. The Bolognese this is our first Bichon female group, best of breed, six-year-old Bolognese, who has won best of breed for the second time here and at Crufts, and this coat doesn't shed, a member of the Bichon family. And the coat described as the flock, meaning it falls uh, into those right. separate locks of hair. An breed of noble origins and has roots with the Italian aristocracy. The now the breed should be sturdy belong. and square. The Although they look small and dainty, they should be sturdy. The Some bone under there, good rib belly. cages, and these loose flocks. They have a wonderful the breed, the great expression and character. An Italian in origin and taking the name from, you might have guessed it, the, the it Italian the city of Bologna. And very popular in the households of fashionable society in Italy. Some paintings going back to the 18th the UK, century of this breed, carried in little baskets with pink bows year, on the handles. Yeah, very stylish. <laughs> shown, of course, in the, the untrimmed and natural state to, to demonstrate that flock. For the first time in and now you see that loose that stranded hair there, a little bit of wave in it, which is correct for the breed, those loose flocks. And the next of our best of breeds from today's toy group. Is now, here is King the first Charles of the Spaniel. Royal Spaniels, the Cavalier King Charles. It takes its there. name from Charles I, the Cavalier King, in the 17th century, because he loved the breed and he had many of them in his household. It takes this color we have here, the Blenheim, this rich chestnut and white, takes its name from Blenheim Palace, one of the royal households. The best of breed, a bitch, number 10634. Well, it's a popular breed, 194 of them here today. The Two judges needed to decide best of breed, so I hope there wasn't any disagreement. No, apparently they had a long discussion and before they were unanimous about this one, so uh, well done to them, yes. That skull should be flat between the ears, no domes. No, it's very important. A flat skull is important. A moderate stop, which is the step between the skull and foreface. A tapered muzzle. They are a sporting spaniel. I said that they were bred down from sporting dogs. This would be a toy spaniel, bred down from the sporting, the hunting dogs on the estate. And those big eyes are a real feature as well, aren't they? The, the breed standard says that the Cavalier King Charles should have a soft expression, and, and those eyes really help with that. Large, dark eyes. And untrimmed, the feet untrimmed, the feathering, they should be untrimmed breed. This is the long-coated Chihuahua. It's the smallest breed in the world. And if you wonder where the name Chihuahua comes from, it is the Mexican state where it was developed. So a, a confident and outgoing dog, which rather belies it, belies its teeny tiny frame, but very, very popular. Although everyone agrees that the Chihuahua is named now it's, for the it, there's a theory that he the comes as a descendant of the Aztec Mexico. Indian dogs and was used as a comforter, which meant you took the dog to bed with you to keep you warm, child. yes. So Some people they, prefer a hot water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> this is more fun. And of course, they may be the smallest breed in the world, but they don't know that they're full of self-importance. I'm delighted to see this one here. He's an import from Japan, very successful. And he's owned by Bill Heap. We see handling him here and his partner, Jill Palmer. 
That's marvellous. And I love the it's description the of Chihuahua the face. The Chihuahua is supposed to be sporting a bold popular. but saucy yeah, <laughs> expression, <laughs> which saucy. I think you get that a little bit, don't you? And again, they've got these There's large flared smile. ears Just set at the, large at the side of the head, like large that. dark eyes, and the tail That's carried really over the back like a sickle. Chihuahua. And what would that distinctive ruff around the neck? before well that was that's just that where the, the profu profusion of coat round the neck and, and shoulders the beautifully coat presented the chihuahua. chihuahua long coated and the breed was judged today by mr steve rooney and he chose this male now the chihuahuas share the same standard but this one is the the smooth coat which is a dense coat it's not a thin coat but everything else is the same we see the wonderful sickle shape to the chihuahua the chihuahua tail there now, it's not often we see a party colour winning the breed. We usually see the gold ones or the solid colours, but this looks very nice indeed. The muzzle is slightly tapered, shouldn't be too short. And this is three-year-old Stan from Ipswich in Suffolk. And one of the important things in breeding toy dogs, it's not just about small size, you have to have sound, healthy dogs. You still need good anatomy, correct shoulders, correct hind legs so the dogs can move well, good rib cage so they can breathe. It, you know, they have to be healthy dogs. There's, there's no prize for getting the smallest dog or the largest dog. And every time you breed for exaggeration, you bring problems in. So it's very important that we have moderation in all things. And judges are being very well trained on that, aren't they, as they're coming up through the ranks? It's very important. The Kennel Club is very aware of health, the first thing that's needed in all dogs. Look at this strut. The Chinese the crested, just Chinese crested extraordinarily distinct dog, comes in two varieties, Chinese the hairless and the powder puff, the powder puff being the less dog. common, but this breed also thought to date back to the Han dynasty in China. China. But even with the hairless, we've still got some hair there on the head, uh, on the tail and on the feet. And developed a breeding program to produce smaller type dogs. I always call this uh, coated variety My Little Pony. My Little Pony with the mane of hair, the anklets over its feet and the plume on the tail and it goes very smartly and there's feathered ears and this is a very happy dog now it's believed to date back many centuries and the larger version of them were used as hunting dogs the smaller dogs made good guard dogs and companions and that tail, the, the long flowing plume. Another of the breed features is the elongated toes, and we see it's not a compact foot, they're longer toes. Certainly happy to be here, that's for sure. And they are required to have a happy temperament, it's part of the breed standard. The tail, it's almost like waving a flag. And this lovely fine head, and the, this pronounced nose, very important, and lovely eyes and expression. This one from Germany. For breed judgment. Chris Lawson, the distinctive the outline of the Coton de Tuliar. We see that rise the the over the loin. It was the royal dog of Madagascar, developed on the island of Tula for several centuries and adopted by no noble families of Tula. A law was passed against commoners owning them. It was they were kept pure by the isolation of their, their where they lived. And most breeds would have an undercoat. This the one, Frank, only a single coat, despite of how thick it looks. And it takes a lot of <laughs> a lot of care to keep them looking like this. I can tell you, the coat has the texture of old-fashioned hard cotton. So it's not cotton wool, soft like it not looks. Not at all. It's, it should have a hard touch to it. And again, that light fluffiness about it over the over the loins, on the tail, which sometimes comes carried a little higher over the back. A distinctive breed, one of the Mediterranean Bichon family again, white coat and dark pigmentation. And this is a female, five-year-old Pinny from Basingstoke in Hampshire and has a number of best of breeds at championship shows behind her already. Best of breed at Crufts for Coton Tuliar, undoubtedly a highlight of her career. And the next dog on the table 
It's one of the oldest of Britain's native toy breeds. This is the English Toy Terrier. This female Florence from Newcastle is only 10 months old. The English Toy Terrier. And this is just Florence's second challenge certificate today at Crufts. So a huge moment. But this breed is on the vulnerable breeds list. A very fine and slender breed. They're fast and agile. Its origins are in the world and this is another breed which was bred down from a sporting breed, Victoria bred down from the Manchester Terrier, and, and was very popular in Regency and Georgian period. Time. Kept for rutting and in rutting competitions. It's, it's a fine it's bone breed. It's got the, the coloration of the Manchester Terrier, this black toy with tan toy markings, toy and we'll see on the front of its legs a little thumbprint, the shape of a thumb mark in the tan hair, a prized breed feature. The action of the uh, English Toy Terrier should be an extended trotting action. It should really stride out. And we'll see when we see its ears coming towards us, they're the shape of candle flames. The candle flame ears of the English Toy Terrier. And it's thought there could be a little bit of Italian Greyhound in there as well, which you can perhaps see in the shape of the outline. And the, uh, the rise over the loin to the tail set, perhaps, yes. But the Manchester Terrier has that as well. Yes. And very alert. It's a great win for a, t a young one like this getting best of breed of crops. And under the one of the breed experts judging them today, Nick Gawley. And only 75 registered in the country. And here's the Griffon Bruxellois. As his name suggests, he's a Belgian breed. Comes in two coats, the rough and the smooth. This is the red rough here we've got. Dogs of this type can be seen in paintings dating back to the 15th century. They were kept to keep down rodents in the stables, little guard dogs and vermin dogs. They should be cobby and square with his large round skull and big eyes. Yeah, expected to have a really alert expression, high set ears. Indeed. And this is Tori, only two-year-old female. And Tori has Thank now become a champion dog with her third challenge certificate at Crufts today. To so that is a number you require to be able to call yourself a champion. And, and it's a good way to w win your championship at Crufts, yes? Look at that monkey-like face. That is a real particular feature, isn't it? And really strutting her stuff out on the green carpet. His hind legs giving a good drive and propulsion. We all, and this is a, what we call a red rough. We can see them in, in black and black and tan. Large dark eyes and those big nostrils. Very important in the short faced breeds to have big nostrils for breathing power. Diane chose the dog number 11283. Well, the Havanese has a wonderful silky coat. It's the national dog of Cuba and a member of the Bichon family as well. And although that coat is incredibly full, it doesn't shed. You should see that body rising a little along the shoulders across to the tail. It's a very affectionate, intelligent, and lively dog. Is that the breed has had so many and they're names, in so com the becoming increasingly popular, Black all colours allowed. The they arrived in Cuba with Mediterranean Dollar sea Havana. traders and have spread throughout Europe. Popularised by wealthy Cuban families in the dog. early days, so their cool. silky coat so and springing action are breed design. features. And as you say, the top line rises then towards the tail. That's a breed feature Havana. which the judge will be looking for. And this one's come over from France, two and a half Havanese. years old, uh, named Imperio. And, and apparently it's, it's the top there. champion in France so and has well nine titles across course, European countries. This is France. some going, isn't it? Well, Crufts will be high three, on the list Havanese. to try and Havanese. win through to best in show Havanese. by winning the group if he can. That's our Havanese. Moving beautifully. The on the table, the Burton Easton, is the Italian Greyhound. Now, the wonderfully elegant, exquisite outline of the Italian Greyhound. The judge just feeling its fine bone. This is perhaps the most ancient of the lap dogs. Evidence of small hounds like this were found in the tombs of the pharaohs. But it was certainly in Roman times. And in Italy, it was bred down from the sight hound to be exquisitely refined and delicate. It should look like a piece of Dresden china, the quality of that. Judge still looking at correct dentition for the breed. They have the sporting outline of a 
sight hound and a high stepping action like this is very correct for the breed that rise over the loin for muscular power should and this is only a two and a half year old sky uh, lives in oxfordshire and it was in fact a lockdown baby is how how sky is described so only been shown very lately so pretty new and craft will be a, a big new arena seeming to handle it pretty well so far but more slender than a greyhound yeah. in, in every respect, longer, flatter, more narrow skull. And I can tell you they're the most lovely breed to live with. They're so gentle and a wonderful coat and skin. It's so soft and supple. And look at that high stepping action. Not only should it have lift, but it should reach well forward. Palmer judged the Japanese chins today. And from an entry of 77, she said... Hoshi is five years old and won best of breed at Crufts in 2019. So back again. The Japanese, Japanese chin. chin. The breed, in fact, originated in China, but the breed made its way to Japan when the Empress of China gifted a dog to her Japanese counterpart. And the word chin means cat-like. And if you ever see this dog washing itself, you'll know exactly why. They're absolutely fastidious. That's quite right. Now, this is what I call the oriental aristocrat, so and they should move they like one. They'll strut the their stuff, a little bit of Japan. lift to their front action. They're cobby and chunky, and the lovely Chinese tail carried over the back, and this lovely little padded muzzle. And, and look at that, when we get another look at the eyes, no what the a particular breed of feature is what's Japanese described, Frank, as a look of family. astonishment, so a, a squint almost. But it's because of a little bit of white, isn't it? A little bit of white in the inner corner of the eye. Now, I saw this dog when he won as a young dog at Crufts, He's looking Portuguese even better now. He's, ma is. he's matured, and what lovely Europe. carriage he's got. That's that silky coat. Japanese chin, one Black and white, one but you can also have red and white or lemon and white. And that's a very nice, very this nice performance he's put on here. Was the breed judge today for King Charles Spaniels. Here we see her now, here is the other Royal Spaniel. The this is the King Charles, Charles Spaniel. Spaniel. Bred alongside the Cavalier. The Can you see the difference? Well, this one is a little smaller. The skull is more domed and the foreface a bit shorter. At the early shows, it was shown alongside the Cavaliers as one breed. But in 1944, the two types were separated. Very popular in Victorian England when there was a great love of Japanese things and the short-faced breeds. So we had the split in 1944. This is the King Charles. The more popular one is the Cavalier King Charles we saw earlier. They come from the same root stock. This one we'll see is a tricolour, black, white and tan. We can also see them in Blenheim, in Ruby, which is a plain golden colour, and the black and tan. And that coat, silky to the touch, it can have that wave, but that should never become curly. And you've still got that wonderful feathering over the, the legs ears and the tail. This used to be a sort of not so, so outgoing as the Cavalier, but the breed has done great work. And this one's very confident, and the breed has improved very much in its outgoing temperament. And only a young dog at 16 months old, named Schmeichel. Mrs. Liz Stannard was in charge of 47 in the breed today and sent through this dog 115. Now here is a bit of artistry in the clipping. The Lervchen, the coat like is clipped to resemble the mane of a male lion. This is a five-year-old dog, Don, second time of being best of breed at Crufts. And well, it's a German name, French in origin, and a member of the Bichon family. Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands brought the breed to the fore. Yes, he, he was another dog that was used as a comforter dog to provide warmth, snuggling up against its owner in bed and clipped to represent a lion's coat pattern with a plume tail. Striding out quite nicely, he was a little bit tentative when he came in, but he settled to the, to the job now. Apparently those ladies back in the day, they, they found that the shaved hind quarters you know, felt warmer. Extra warm, <laughs> they, that's right. So, different type of hot water bottle, <laughs> yes. But that lion-like appearance as well is what's said to give the breed the, the symbolic power of the lion, which and people felt was pretty And the lovely expression with the large, dark eyes. And here's the stunning outline, the Maltese, another of the Bichon family. And the ladies of high social status carried them round with them and once described as the jewels of women. Portraits from the mid-19th century show the breed hardly changed. 
white silky coat and this lovely dark pigmentation just what look at the lovely dark eyes the nose what an expression some say the dog originated in sweden and does the top knot become dog. tradition, decorative, <laughs> for show? Well, often they were shown with a little red ribbon. We've become a bit more exotic now with these, but a bit of jewellery there. So, uh, But we don't want it to become overdone, and it's uh, rather exaggerated. But this is very nice, just pinned up with two little bows. And the amount of grooming required to keep a Maltese and looking ship shape. And to keep them clean as well, yes. look, looking like that. <laughs> oh, but although they, they do live natural lives, they can run and gallop in the garden, but you know, sometimes the breeders wrap their coats up for everyday life, and then they brought out of the, um, the folds for shows. Well, this dog, Ray, is five years old and is back at Crufts, having won best of breed last time we were here in 2020. So straight back and straight back into the toy group as best of breed. Beautiful. And the next dog on the table is the miniature pincher. They were judged today by Mrs. Margaret Anderson. Well, like the bigger version, the pincher, the miniature variety was originally used to catch rats, but the breed tends to have a bit of a quieter life now, as more of a family companion. And again, when the dog starts to move, you'll see that distinctive high stepping action, very typical of the breed, a lively, high spirited, sturdy, and compact breed. Although they share the same homeland of Germany, the relationship a sharp there. square outline of the breed smooth coated this is a black and tan you'll also see them in red or fawn and then in this country we were looking for some lift in the front action almost a hackney action we're looking for in the breed here a slightly sloping top line to a high set tail this wedge-shaped head and sharply pricked ears although we can get the drop-eared variety which are rarer this is Javier, two years old, and from Exmouth in Devon. Germany. And although its numbers there were decimated by the war, it flourished as a show dog and companion. And that hair the being the since. smooth coat should really cover the body uniformly, shouldn't it? Yes, it it's a sleek coat and easy toys. to keep. Now, we it's saw the Doberman Pincher, the, the biggest of these of uh, versions of Pincher, but also the standard German Pincher in another group toys, the, the other day. All the same shape, the square, sloping top line, wedge-shaped head, Best a miniaturization of working breeds, you see. And now the table, you see our best now of the 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 little butterfly dog from France and Belgium, the Papillon. Exquisite, fine boned. These ears, when they look like the spread wings of a butterfly, furnished with this luxurious silky coat. The Papillon is known as the continental toy spaniel or the dwarf spaniel, the epagnol nain. There is also a drop eared variety known as the Falen. They're lightly boned, elegant and light on the move. Of course, we saw a wonderful one here, best in show, just a few years ago. Yeah, that was in 2019, and there were 159 Papillons entered in Crufts this year. And this one, Jensen, three years old, has won through as best of breed. He's a big winner and has had the wonderful name of Glenir and Who's Your Daddy? Who's Your Daddy? Wonderful. But named Jensen after Jensen Button because of the way he used to speed around the house as a puppy. <laughs> and, I quite like that. And he's been a big winner since he was a puppy himself. Light and buoyant on the move. The judge just sending him out again. He wasn't very settled on the up and down. So the judge has just sent him again to look at that. He's perhaps not liking the carpet very much. He looks a bit tentative there. But he's a lovely quality dog. Look at that coat to be really abundant, silky and flowing, which it looks to be. And Our best degree, the Papillon 811815. Mrs. Brenda Oates judged the entry of 45... Well, you can't mistake the sight of the Pekingese. Unmistakable. It can be traced back to the Tan Dynasty in China. If you were deemed a commoner, you weren't allowed to own one of these. The breed was popular at the Imperial Palace in Peking, now Beijing, of course, and clearly the elite of society wanted to keep the dog all to themselves. This is Elsie, uh, who is a female dog and crafts best of breed today. Just one challenge certificate prior, but wow. 
And now Bert has many years of experience. There he's picking up the dog. It should be a heavy dog to pick up. And all of the weight of the dog is in the front. It's a broad chest, then narrower in the hind quarters. So he's picked it up to see that the weight is well distributed. Looking at this broad, flat skull, large dark eyes, big nostrils, very important, and a good underjaw. Because of the wide front and the narrow hind quarters, when the dog moves, it has this rolling action, which we see perfectly there. It rolls. The body is shaped almost like a lie in a broad chest, narrow hind quarters. So the breed standard is very clear that the, the coat so shouldn't be excessive. Now, what counts as excessive when well, you've got a coat like that? Uh, this this is, looks quite a young one, as though it may still be, I don't know if it's still a puppy. The puppies carry bigger coat, but we don't want too much coat. It should just frame the body. Yeah, only two years old, born in November 2020. Best of breed, Pekingese, number 11879. And now on the table, we see our best of breed the Pomeranian. Beautiful outline of the Pomeranian on the table. Now, it's the smallest of the Spitz family, and it's bred down from sled dogs of the Arctic, like the Samoyed in the Finnish Spitz. It's got this little wedge-shaped head, cushioned muzzle. The judge just looking at its head and expression there, feeling the bone. That should be quite fine bone. But underneath that, there's a solid, good rib cage. Pomeranian the high set tail, and he'd be checking on the soundness of the back legs, feeling the coat texture the there. Well the here. outer coat should be harsh, Between softer Victoria, undercoat, the and again, Florence, checking the correct here. dentition. Indeed, Just because they're toy dogs, the they still have to have the equipment to live well. A little dog called Marco. Yeah, it must be healthy, must have the correct he confirmation. And there were 138 Pomeranians at Crufts this year. Today. So this one, Emmerich from Norway, and and has they, won through his best of breed. And they should be buoyant on the move. They should look like, almost like a little Jaffa orange on legs. This one's got a fan club <laughs> in the arena, a little bit like the toy poodle who won through to best in show earlier. You should see a real fox-like quality to that head yes, and nose. Fo foxy head and expression, yes. So around the ring we see our best of the Pomeranian one one And a very seven. confident <laughs> performance. They may be look, they may be toy dogs, but they've got all the spirit and character in the world. Vivacious as well as being now dainty. We see on the table the unmistakable pug. This was an entry of 223. Now, Timmy is nearly six aircraft. years old, has had a lot of fantastic wins, judges. but this one today, to be best of and breed, Dr. tops Andrea them all. Chef. The pug, a very robust dog. I mean, there's a lot of best dog breed, packed there into that dog, small one, frame. Two, Needs to be oh, compact four, and have well knit proportions, and that coat short London, and fine, but very soft to the, the pug touch. He's one of the oldest dog breeds in the world. Ancient Chinese dog and he's come from a wonderful entry today of 223 pugs, two specialist judges, Dr. Andreas Schimmel, who's a veterinarian himself and breeds pugs, and Moa Persson from Sweden, who's had pugs for many years, two formidable judges, very strong in their opinions for healthy dogs and good type dogs. And this is the winner. What a win for that. And again, the judge will have paid close attention to the nostrils to make sure that they are well open. And we'll also want to see some clearly defined wrinkles on the forehead, which are, which are pretty easy to spot. And, and the, 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 the black That's mask the gives them lovely expression. They were taken to Holland, into Europe, by traders from the East Indian Company. And they were taken brought to England by William of Orange when he came to rule the country, and that's how they, they became popular in England. They've been judged today by Paul Harding, and from an entry of 32... And here is the rare breed, the Rusky, to the Rusky to the Toy, a relatively modern edition developed in the 1950s, and it's thought that they may have some of the English Toy Terrier in its ancestry. Certainly we see the large ears. It's also thought that the Chihuahua and the Miniature Pincher are, are part of its ancestry as well. Now, it is lightly built, elegant in its head. This 
lovely level top line and a high set tail. Fine boned and dainty. Dainty. And this one's two years old. Vivi lives in London. You see the fringed ears of this variety. Not dissimilar, frankly, not quite as feathered as the butterfly is of the papillon, the papillon, but not completely different. Of course, the smooth coated variety was the first one, and then they produced a long haired puppy, and they bred long hair to long hair to get the long haired variety. And the judge will be looking here for a really brisk and positive and action. And a light buoyant, and this is going very well and very confidently. And now we're able to see our best of breed Yorkshire Terrier. The breed was judged today by Mrs. Barbara Boot, and there was a breed entry of 71 dogs. This is the Silky Toy Terrier with its Lots roots in the Yorkshire mail. Cotton the Mills. The Yorkshire Terrier, unmistakable coat. Sometimes we see it displayed atop a red box. Not this time, though, but this is six-year-old Conan. And the breed is born black and tan, and the coat changes to that beautiful steel blue when it's about 12 to 18 months old. And the judge, again, just testing the coat with the brush now. The, the tan shouldn't mingle with the blue hair, and he's feeling the texture. It should feel cold to the touch, like cold satin. The tan is darkest at the roots, fading to the edges. This is, a, again, a toy terrier, so they've got terrier temperament, full of confidence, sharply pricked ears. Look at that beautiful top line, perfect tail carriage, and you hear the, the crowd love it. It's so confident, putting on a good show. And the length of that coat must be important, isn't it, to make sure it doesn't impede the dog's movement in any way? Absolutely, and uh, this is another breed where sometimes they're put into crackers, these little foils of paper between shows, so the dog can lead a natural life running round in the garden. It's amazing to think that the patriarch of the breed, going back to the mill days, was a dog called Huddersfield Ben, who was a ratter in the mills. Little did he know he was going to be the patriarch of these wonderful show dogs all over the world. Hard to think of these dog dogs chasing down rats, isn't it? Final look at all these dogs together. Please applaud and congratulate. Now, who is the judge going to choose for the shortest in this toy group? They've had a long day, and I'm sure you'll. Agree, they put up a wonderful performance for us. And as our judge, Bert well, Bert Easton's got quite a job on his hands here, Frank, hasn't he, to see who's going to join. We've had a Siberian Husky Border Collie, a Greyhound, an Irish Terrier, and a Toy Poodle go through to Best in Show so far, and a couple of international entries amongst that as well. Well, he's, he's a judge of all of these toy breeds. He'll be very familiar with the standards and the quality that the breed should have. So I think that will um, colour his choices here. He's a great knowledge in the toy breeds. A good dog man. Such a big prize at stake to go through to best in show. He'll want to make sure that he is absolutely firm in his choice as to who is going to be number one and winner of this toy group. Just look at that little chihuahua look. wagging its tail over its back. It's full of confidence. But just looking at the eyes and expression of the breeds, distinctive outline of the Cotton de Tulia there. <laughs> I think the eyes were following the judge just then. And there's a wonderful arrogant expression from the Havanese. Silky coat, arrogant. I think again those eyes just are pleading, pick me. And that lovely okay. Japanese chin looking very well tonight. A total entry of 4,220. Striking outline of the Maltese. The total show entry here at Crufts 2022. Right, it seems like it's going to be decision time very soon. Four will be picked. The first who Bert goes towards will be number one and going through to best in show. Well, he's going to have the short. He's going to have the shortlist first of eight dogs, and then from there he'll whittle them down to the top four. So who are these eight going to be? We've sometimes seen nine chosen. The Bichon comes Bichon forward. The Bolognese. And the Bolognese, Bolognese comes out Bichon and the Cavalier. Spaniel. There's three. And here comes the Coton de Tulia. And the Havanese. Coton de Tulia. The Cavalier. Oh, sorry, the King Charles. The Italian Greyhound. And the Pomeranian. And the Yorkshire Terrier comes forward. So there's an interesting Yorkshire collection terrier. he's got. I think that Yorkshire Terrier is a, a popular choice at he's the got, end. He's got nine. 
and the, the, the rest so leave. They'll be very happy to have made it thus far in the finals to get into this big and ring at Crofts on the, the big red, the big green carpet, as they say, all around the world. The well, these dogs will get another chance now to impress the judge and to see who will go through to best in show. So we whittle them down. Time for our Bichon Frise, three-year-old blue from crew in Cheshire. Well, the and is the Bichon moving Frise. with great confidence. We can see those black Lee pads Macau. as he goes away from to show he's got the correct pigment. <laughs> Looking around very confident, this large, dark eyes. Perfect movement coming towards us, nothing loose about it. And the, next to and the Bolognese, the Bolognese. sturdy, two, square two, with these five, loose Adele flocks Summers. of hair. Best of breed was this bitch, number 1053. Gorgeous. And this is a six year old, based in Lancashire. And round. Bert sending them round to see the top line. This is the, the second best of breed placement. Round she goes at Crofts. Bolognese, best of breed. So Bolognese. 10538. Now the Cavaliers oh, made the Cavalier final Spaniel. cut here. This Blenheim Cavalier, this little Top the name, sporting Spaniel in miniature. Forward, Silky coat, using its hocks well, really Sporting driving Lucy well. Lucy Costa. This, one's a bitch, number one. this is Melody, Zero. just over two Three years more. old, from Herefordshire. And the tail coming straight off the back, finishing the outline nicely. Good length of stride in front and a level top line. It is such a long way around that ring. <laughs> we now are going to see. And here's the, the distinctive outline. Dark pigmentation. The group by Mrs. Chris Lawson. Of the best Cotton de Tulia. Treble 153. Dog favoured by the aristocracy in its native land. And again, full of confidence. And this and went very well earlier, this arrogant Havanese. carriage of this so lovely Havanese. Just look at that head carriage and the expression. And this very good rear drive. Mm, Imperio, almost got an imperious Ab gait, hasn't he? Absolutely. Two and a half years old. And loving this big ring, and the hander getting the best out of it, taking it at just the right pace, going beautifully there. Now, very now different sort of action, Italian this Greyhound. high lift and reach Sent of the Italian the Greyhound. This is a bitch, Exquisite one, head, one, we saw a wonderful whippet in the... Um, in the Hound Group yesterday, we see the similarities in this, in the shape and outline. Beautiful to live with, with this soft, pliant oh, skin Best and coat. Lovely chiseling in the head, neatly folded ears. And Sky is two and a half year old female from Bicester in Oxfordshire. And, and here's Charles the other Royal Spaniel, the King Charles Pauline Spaniel Lady. from a famous Lady. kennel, the Baldrigan Kennel. This tricolour, very Snails confident, very one firm one in its hindquarters and tail carriage. Quite correct. And striding out. More domed in the skull and shorter in the foreface than the Cavalier, which we saw earlier. And here's this buoyant this movement. This is going very well. And I think the clap on is out Emmerich on this one, I think. This uh, yep. very Emmerich, popular. Emmerich is a crowd favourite from Norway. The Pomeranian, five and a half years old, has been a junior world winner, an international champion, a UK champion. And foot perfect, look, foot perfect. Small dog really striding with this brisk stride and buoyant action. And here's one, uh, perhaps this is uh, the, <laughs> the crowd's choice here because what a performance is put on. Look at that neck and back line, this arrogance. Of course, we saw the judge fi feeling the coat texture. Look at this confidence as it strides out. Yep, Conan is stealing the show here. Six years old, a champion dog from Spain.
There was our toy group judge having moved all his short distance. So the judge has had a chance to look again. And I think he's got a bit of a smile on his face. He's happy with what he's uh, seen. And it's no delay. The Yorkshire Terrier wins it. Straight away. Conan. We've had two big crowd pleasers tonight in the groups, haven't we? Six-year-old Conan through to best in show from Spain. And in second place, the, the Pomeranian, the other one. Oh, it's Which a popularity did, contest. <laughs> it's not actually, it's but not. it, did, it, did, it did, did please the crowd, that wonderful, yeah. wonderful well, Pomeranian. Well, it's because they're such beautiful yes, dogs and, for the breed. And they put on a performance to please. And here's the Cavalier coming out. Cavalier Third for the Cavalier. Marvellous and an overjoyed owner there. Toy group four. For, and where's fourth going? The Bichon Frise. Le Martin, Mr. Blue, he's four, had nine, lots seven. of good successes in the last year. What a smart lineup for Bert Easton the there. The Handshake for those well, runners up as they leave the ring. For their but huge Here congratulations to our Yorkshire Terrier at six years old through to best in show and just a fabulous so example of the healthy confirmation. You. You look absolutely I can't believe it. I, mean, I, just, I never imagined this. And where have you come from to come to Crafts? I'm from Spain. The dog is from Japan. <gasps> Fantastic. Wow. So yes. you travelled all this way to the world's biggest he's dog been, show. He's been with me for a while so before, so it's possible to come this way. He won, he won group second also three years ago. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. And we've seen a Yorkshire Terrier win best in show here at Crafts. Do you think you could go all the way tomorrow? Well, we are brave for that. <laughs> You pray for this. Well, congratulations. Just tell Thank us a little bit so about much. this beautiful dog. Uh, pet name, please. It's Conan. Connor? Conan. Fantastic. Yes. Well, Connor joins the rest of our five group winners. We've got well, six group winners. We've got another one tonight. Congratulations to the toy group winner here at Crafts, the Yorkshire Terrier. Well, just a beautiful example, Frank, I of a Yorkshire Terrier in every respect. It's the, the grooming and the coat, but it's also the the body of the dog, the confirmation, and a healthy dog. And if ever a dog was well named, it comes from the Royal Precious Kennel, and I believe he's bred in Japan but lives in Spain. So the Japanese have had some very good breeders of the toy breeds, and he's one of them. Royal Precious, JP, it's Conan. Yes, good. Yes, and the breed standard did say that Conan should carry himself with a sense of importance, and, and he, he absolutely he, saw that in the ring. He filled the bill, didn't he? Yes. Well, there's the, the top four. It's only the first that goes through to best in show, but all of these dogs, best of breed at Crufts. And delighted to have been placed, indeed, in the toy group, Bichon Frise. But the star is Yorkshire Terrier going through to best in show.